Welcome to the Real Mama Pod. I'm your host, Devin. And I'm your host, Kendra. We are real moms. Sharing real experiences. The, the things, things people, people don't, don't tell you. Hey, Mama. Hey. Hey, friend. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I am well. That's good. Just That's hanging. Good. So if this is your first time listening to the pod, I'm your host, Devin. And I'm your host, Kendra. Welcome to the Real welcome. Mama Pod. Welcome. So if you all have been following us over the last two years, mm-hmm. Uh, we have we've done a huge facelift we like <laughs> we started from the bottom now we're here um and we are powered now by something extraordinary media group mm-hmm. and the real mama part is a part of the se network yeah can you believe that i know we we dreamt about this and it's actually coming to dreamt, fruition and we here <laughs> we here so man like this is again a, an amazing opportunity and we're so happy to be here uh, and as you all can see, like we're vibing in Tulum. Yeah, this Tulum, is Tulum is in Atlanta right now, mm-hmm. and this is our set. And cold, rainy Atlanta at that. Oh but. no. Okay. <laughs> let's, anyway, let's move past the, the rain. So, and the cold. if you've been following us for a while, we are changing some things up. So we're always going to open up with a review. So words of affirmation, you know, all that, you know, just. Start leaving us reviews because we're trying to chart. We're trying to be a household name this year. So Mm -hmm. leave us a review, okay? So this one is called So Relatable, and it's from Mm -hmm. Al Banks. What is he? Okay. It says, I'm so thankful I happened to stumble upon this podcast. Woo! Praise hands. (laughs) Not a stumble. Yes, a stumble. That's good. (laughs) All right. It has been a blessing during my journey of infertility and now motherhood. Oh, yay. Mm. So happy to be a part of the True Real Mama Pod. Oh, wow. Thank Thank you. you. Thanks for writing in. Um, And so as you all can see, we have a beautiful guest here. And this is a returning guest, okay? And this guest came to us, not came to us, but was... She graced our presence when we were at the bottom, okay? And we were reflecting mm-hmm. about this because we thought we was doing something. We had rented a little Airbnb. We had a camera that went dead on us in the middle of our recording. And then we filmed the it rest of the phone. Mess. You could see the cord. You could see our leg. You could see everything. The audio was not connected to the camera. It was terrible. It was a mess. And you know, Alina still reposted that to her page. <laughs> and mo- I love it. That means she loves her. Authentic self. It it was trash, y'all. It was trash. And if the episode, now the content and the message, it was there. Mm -hmm. That was there. And the audio was actually pretty good. But the visual wasn't quite where the audio was. But if y'all want to go back and listen to that, please do. It's called Mama Gotta Have It. It's episode 28. So, Mm -hmm. yes, very beginning, early stages, first season. The message is there. It was yes. just everything else. They don't look like this. Yeah, but that's this is okay. part two. So this is part two of her episode. And in that episode, we talked about mommy guilt mm-hmm. and what that means. And we said that's a whole episode in itself. Mm-hmm. So we're bringing her back to talk about that. Mm-hmm. She's going to give us some tips because she's a coach and she began mamas together, mm-hmm. uh, especially, especially high functioning mamas. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, we're going to dibble and dabble a little bit. But don't Alina. be surprised if Alina start asking us questions. Right. Too, exactly. That's just what she, she does. She did that to us last time, too. <laughs> so how are you taking together. care of yourself? <laughs> you turn my so welcome back, Alina. Welcome Thank back. We're so happy to have you. I am you. so proud of y'all. Y'all know I always have to like give y'all y'all flowers Aww. because y'all are my baby yes. still. <laughs> um, we love you. When before we were even thinking about kids, right? Mm-hmm. And of course now, what, a decade later, we all have yeah. children. Yeah. And I think that to be able to have this space mm-hmm. in this community mm-hmm. speaks volumes about the fact that you're still honoring yourself Mm -hmm. right and saying I need a moment and I also want to serve others and so Mm -hmm. thank y'all for having me I'm glad to be here this feels amazing I'm nervous because I'm like where are we are you like my Oprah Winfrey network (laughs) (laughs) sports Definitely an upgrade from the last time man I love you y'all it's something extraordinary yeah it's lovely um so Alina you have been very trained you have your own podcast Mm yeah the reminder remedy yes and you have streamed over 50,000, which is huge. Yes. yes. How does that make you feel? Congratulations. I'm like, who are the 50,000? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Um, I think it, it's a good feeling. You know, when I, my very first episode, which is still one of my favorite, mm-hmm. is called Your People Aren't Your People. Mm-hmm. Um, I recorded it from my phone. I was at a conference and I was inspired uh, by one of the messages that just kind of said, you know, you just got to sometimes just go, even when you're you're not ready, you know, mm-hmm. and I went back to my hotel room and just started recording and um, 
here we are five years later and I listen to some of my own episodes and I'm like, damn, girl, you really be out here telling people what to do with their lives. You know? <laughs> and, you know, I could look back and as a young 30 something and a lot of what I was saying is still holds true, even mm-hmm. though I've evolved and I understand it even more. Like mm-hmm. I even understand my own messages more. Um, but to know that 50,000 episodes have been played in people's ears it is very gratifying and it, it really encouraged me to um, keep going because, yeah. you know, I mean, mm-hmm. the, the, the space has changed. It's gotten um, a lot more uh, robust and that can be intimidating. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, to know that even when I wasn't recording, people were still listening. It was it, it felt really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Speaking mm-hmm. of not recording, you were pretty transparent about taking like a sabbatical. Yeah. So mm-hmm. what prompted that? Yeah. You know, I think that um, it was a couple of things. So number one, I had a client who she was telling me about a contract worker that she had been partnered with Mm -hmm. who essentially works every six months. And so essentially he would work on a project for six months and then he would take three months off. Mm -hmm. Then he Mm -hmm. would go back. But he was in very high demand in his space, like he worked in marketing. But one of the things that he attributed to his success was his ability to essentially do nothing. Mm -hmm. So he would, you know, be inspired by the three months where he wasn't having to be in the weeds. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I I took this concept of seasonality, which had been kind of, I had heard a few productivity gurus or, Mm -hmm. you know, actually Cal Newport, shout out to Cal, you know, I love him. (laughs) Um, He mentioned how for him as an academia, Mm -hmm. he has summers off, but Mm -hmm. he thinks that as his, you know, part of his productivity for lack of a better term is because he can truly take breaks right. and go mm-hmm. and write and go and do these things. And so as part of um, the work that I do with individuals, I was encouraging them to take breaks mm-hmm. and I was seeing like extraordinary results. Mm-hmm. And so, you know me, I'm like, practice what you preach, right? right? So I had already kind of started thinking about how can I have a, a slow down period? Mm-hmm. Um, and it just never came, mm-hmm. right? We always think about, okay, we're gonna take a break. And then eventually the body says, oh, you're going to sit down. Right. You're going to slow down. Mm-hmm. And so I started having some health challenges mm-hmm. that I could no longer ignore. Um, and so in 2022, I got diagnosed with something called achalasia, mm-hmm. which is basically where you're having like spasms in your esophagus. And it left me where I was like choking in my sleep every night. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just a really, really hard time of suffering for almost two years until I finally said, I'm going to go and like get it checked out. Right. And so that the way that that, that my schedule works is that I renew all of my clients in January. My surgery was in February and I was like, this is the perfect time to just like not renew anybody and just like focus on me. And it was like the best thing that I could have ever done. Mm -hmm. And so I think that it was a combination of me wanting it and then my body forcing me to do it Mm -hmm. that I finally Mm -hmm. just Mm -hmm. took a step back and spent all of last year still working, but not at the same pace. But then I also Mm -hmm. had at least a quarter of just like purely focusing on me, which was life changing, mm-hmm. obviously. Can you so imagine? <laughs> what did you learn during the sabbatical about you? Yeah. Um, so first of all, I just really realized that even when you have surgery, right, or you are making these changes, it doesn't mean that you're fixed. Mm. And so I kept thinking, okay, I'll have the surgery. As soon as I came out of the surgery, like my instant pain was gone. But as part of the surgery, they essentially had to wrap a piece of my stomach around my esophagus, which oh, wow. then resulted in complications with like my stomach, mm-hmm. which had me in the hospital for almost two weeks. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. away. And y'all know I got four kids, mm-hmm. right? And a husband who trying to survive. And so that period actually was like, OK, we think I'm doing this big thing, right? The surgery being the big thing. And then everything is going to fix. And I'm going to just go back to doing what I was doing. Mm-hmm. But Again, I had already told myself, this is the season where you really got to make a change, but then see your change through. Mm -hmm. And so once I had the surgery, I felt pretty good. And then this step back really became like this period of me figuring out how did I get here? So it was very reflective, Mm -hmm. right? It was very painful. Mm -hmm. So like there were nights where I was like literally on the sofa, like, fuck, Mm -hmm. like, am I going to die tonight? Like, that's Mm -hmm. how much pain I was in. Like, Mm -hmm. is this it? And I would look around and I'm like, this is not 
like where I want to die. Right. Like this is not how I want to end. Like there's so much stuff that I want to do. Mm-hmm. And I had really gone through a season of a lot of like self doubt mm-hmm. and not knowing like what's my next move. And it was like in that moment, I was like, who cares? Like you have breath, right. you know, like you had the opportunity to just like be and mm-hmm. choose. And now you physically can't like right. you are like, you know, under anesthesia, like not doing anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so during that period, I just kept making promises to myself, like, God, if you get me out of this, I promise you I'm going to change. Mm-hmm. Um, when I got home from the hospital, the first book, and y'all know I love books. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've become a, like a super audio book girl. But the first book that I listened to was um, Viola Davis's new book. Mm-hmm. And that That's book is so good, yeah. but it's, gr- it's, it's grimy, you know, yeah. like she talks about like waking up with like rats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. on her face yeah. you know and so it was just like she became like my fairy godmother mm-hmm. in that time mm-hmm. where I'm like heavily medicated out of surgery and I'm just like listening to her every night but her messaging was so powerful to me because it was like it's a journey yeah. you know mm-hmm. and there is no quick fix like it's just mm-hmm. not gonna happen mm-hmm. and so stop expecting it and mm-hmm. so the moment that I realized like okay I've been putting too much on myself and I need to just pay, like, be more in tune with what's inward to then make outward decisions. Mm. It's just changed the way that I've, like, I move, you yeah. know, because I'm, I show myself in my body a lot more grace. But then I allow myself to, like, process a little bit longer because I've always been super impulsive. I move really fast. And now I just, like, slow the fuck down. Yeah, like, yeah. I just slow down. That's real. I'm learning that too. Yeah, yeah. it's me hard too. to slow down when you're just always going, going, going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and your body is mentally and physically telling you to stop. Pause. Right. Pause. Right. I'm that's that's that. the word of mm-hmm. the year. Pause. It's like pause in coaching. We call it a present pause. Like when you really want to ask your client another question, but you're like, just pause. Mm-hmm. Let them really think. And even I just did a training at um, a early learning center with some of the leaders. And someone said, in order for us to really give these children what they need, we got to move at a pace that allows them to process their feelings. Mm-hmm. So it's patience mm-hmm. and it's pausing to not try to fix it or help them too right. soon. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like, let the children feel what they feel, mm-hmm. pause with them, and then we can just come back together. Right. Mm-hmm. You right. know, so that's my word of the year. It's like, just I'm going to just pause a little bit. And sometimes <laughs> in motherhood, pause. too, when you pause, sometimes they figure it out. And yeah. They yeah. Anyway, they come always. up with a solution. They always do. Yeah. They always yeah. do. I'm really trying yeah. there because I'm always like, oh, let me help. Mm-hmm. Just mommy's. Yeah. But now my husband is more of like, just yep. let him figure it out. Yeah. Like, but he's really I'm trying always to trying to save them. And Jira's like, no, sit down. Mm-hmm. Go upstairs. <laughs> they do so much better when you're not around. Mm-hmm. You're the problem. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel okay. So like speaking of pausing, right? You had to pause to put yourself first. To t- your health required you to do that. Did mm-hmm. you ever feel any mommy guilt? Have you ever felt mom guilt? What is mommy guilt? What it looks? Like? What does it look like? You give us, give us an example. Yeah. So I think that in our last conversation, we talked about doing things for self without guilt, mm-hmm. right? Which was kind of like a big thing. But when we think about mommy guilt, it's a layered approach, in my opinion, because Sometimes we put mommy guilt on ourselves because we think we're supposed to have it, right? Mm-hmm. Society's like, oh, you know, do you feel guilt? It's like, I really did. Like, I wanted to go to that bachelorette party with my friends. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so I used to sometimes feel guilty that I didn't feel guilty. Mm-hmm. Um, even my friend was just asking me, like, do you ever experience mommy guilt? Because it's just not my personality to, you know, walk around feeling like, oh, I'm not doing enough for my kids. Mm-hmm. But I think that one of the reasons why is because, you know, guilt is often associated with us not being able to achieve like the things that we know are priorities, right? Mm-hmm. And so I can remember in the early days, I would verbally say, oh, my kid is the priority, mm-hmm. right? When I just had one. But when I really looked at the things that I was were taking up my time, he was not, right? Mm-hmm. So he dealt with a lot of things early on. And I felt guilt because his teacher was the one that had to tell me that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was like, well, damn, I'm his mom. Why would I not be the first one to recognize it? And it was because I was so busy doing the things that I thought was crafting a good life for him. So that's working hard, building the home, getting the resources, getting the money. It's like, oh, this is for my kids. But like, that's not what babies need. You know, like they need time. Mm-hmm. You know, they need you to have the attention to notice when they need you to pause with them. Mm-hmm. And so I did feel guilt early on with that i think that now i am very very big on 
understanding values and what your priorities are and then aligning your life with that right mm-hmm. so that's a lot of what my coaching is on it's like okay if you say that this is your value how is it showing up right. we can look at your life and see what you really value and so now I don't experience that because my kids are the priority mm-hmm. and you can look at my time and see that they are mm-hmm. now what I can say I can relate with when it comes to guilt is there are other things that are now priorities for me my body is telling me I'm ready for you to go back to work mm-hmm. I want you to experience found on your relationship so I'm starting to feel a little bit more guilt around you know work guilt creator guilt is what I call it you know because the world needs what I have and Mm -hmm. I'm not giving it right so again it's like our body will always tell us when it's missing something right you know sometimes I experience intimacy guilt with my husband it's like damn Mm -hmm. like we need to be doing this more Mm -hmm. often you know every time we have sex I'm like why don't we do this like every day you know and he's like you tell me you know and so I feel guilt with that and so you know it's different things but it's like my body telling me what it needs it's Mm -hmm. like you I want to be around my man more Mm -hmm. why are you not there Mm -hmm. and so I think that if you're experiencing it it's important to recognize that the body or the soul wants something and then realigning your priorities to to be able to support it in that way mm-hmm. so if a mom is feeling like this mama guilt like yeah. what can she do to kind of adjust the way she's thinking and feeling and kind of releasing herself from that mama guilt yeah um well something that i heard early on that really resonated with me and it probably was like a podcast or a book But it said that you are not the only one that can provide the things that you think your children need. Mm -hmm. Right. So meaning you have a village or you say you want to have a village. Are you letting them be that? Right. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can't be at every kid event, especially if you have multiple kids. Like it's just not possible. Mm -hmm. But what you really want is the child to feel supported. So maybe you can send a grandparent. Maybe you can send a nanny. Maybe you could just send a friend that's there, Mm -hmm. you know, in the area to say like, hey, I was here for Thanksgiving right Mm -hmm. and so it's like ultimately when I heard that I thought yeah you're right I don't have to be the only one to do this Mm -hmm. right and sometimes kids actually need to know that they have more than just their parents to support them and so I know that I really leaned into making sure that my children were having a relationship with their grandparents more Mm -hmm. so that if I can't be like during the summers for example You know, they're home with me, but I'm still working. So, yeah, I may experience mom guilt if they're like, mommy, mommy, I need you. So it's like, okay, how can I bring someone here to play with them? So they're experiencing it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like delegating Mm -hmm. some of that away. But then it's also exactly what I just said with becoming hypersensitive to like, why do I feel guilty? Do I feel guilty because I really have chosen my job over my kid and that's not what I want, but that's what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. What what do I need to do to fix it? Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like really pulling back the layers of like, I'm experiencing this because of something. How do I support that feeling? Is it me getting someone else to do it? Or is it me changing something that I'm doing, Mm -hmm. you know, in my own life so that I can be who I want to be? Yeah. Eli's been in this phase of, mommy, come play with me. And it's always when I'm, like, knee deep in something. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, um... (laughs) <laughs> like I really have to pause mm-hmm. and say, baby, I'll be mom. Give mommy five minutes. I'll set a timer, and so he can see and hear yeah. that when the timer goes off, mommy will come play. Or I have to flat out and say, no, mommy can't do it right now. And yeah. then that's when I'm like, dang, I feel bad because he wants to play. He's an only child. He doesn't really have anybody to play with other than the dog. Yeah, and it's like, dang, I, I, but I cannot play with you right now. Right, and I think that is also what we talked about before the show. Is like allowing children to be independent right because they Mm -hmm. can become so enmeshed in us Mm -hmm. that they are needy right like let's Mm -hmm. not just overlook like damn why do you need me so much like stop calling my name you know and Mm -hmm. i can't i i feel guilty because i'm saying no but i also need you to know like i need my time like even if i'm not doing work I need silence right Mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. you know, and I start to communicate that with my my children like, hey, mommy is feeling like a little bit flustered because y'all are doing a lot of yelling and you're Mm -hmm. you want me to be here. You and when I communicate that they can support me by saying, "Okay, Mm -hmm. you know, Alicia may say, Cree, come up here and play with me in my room. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's like the more that I allow them to come to what they need, it can Mm -hmm. also support me because we just can't be everything for everybody, you know, Mm -hmm. but really thinking about what are their needs in this moment? What are my needs and where we can find like that happy medium? Like, I think that that is, 
you know, how we get through it. Because, again, they do want. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you know when they really need it, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Like, you know when they really need physical touch. I know, like, with my kids, a lot of times it is just they need a quick hug. Mm-hmm. They don't really want me to play with them. Mm-hmm. But they do want me to just, like, love on them. So I'll just, like, give. My kids are big, physical, like, mm-hmm. love mm-hmm. language. And so mm-hmm. I'll just hug them or I'll, like, stroke their hair for a little bit. And then they're good, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But it takes time to really understand, mm-hmm. you know, like, their their needs yeah. um, and, and moving through that. Eli and, loves hugs. So I'm yeah. going to have to try that one. Oh, like, yeah. Like, give me five minutes. Let mommy give you a hug just uh-huh. for a second. Go. And sometimes I'll lead with that. I'll, do you want me to play with you or mm-hmm. you really want to hug? Because right. both of my kids are physical touch as well. Yeah. And I feel like they play on my emotions way more than their dad we both can be doing the same thing working from home doing whatever yeah they come find me uh-huh. i'm like you walk past your daddy yeah. to come get to me yeah. to ask me what you could ask him like i'm confused yeah so mm-hmm. really just trying to put more back on jared too yeah. and he'll say it leave your mom alone right like i think that that's a good point though. yeah you know and that's something that a lot of moms do experience because again the guilt of trying to do it all yeah and so mm-hmm. to my point other people can provide them what they need, which mm-hmm. also includes their damn daddy. Yeah, you know, <laughs> absolutely. Like, go to your daddy. And I think that that's something that a lot of mothers come to me about because my husband is so hands-on. Mm-hmm. You know, they think that I need to, um, you know, they're asking me, you know, what did you do, you know, yeah. to make prints? And I'm like, this is, my husband is a nurturer. Mm-hmm. You know, he comes, mm-hmm. he's the oldest of uh, of three, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so he, he always tells people, he's a better parent than me mm-hmm. when it comes to knowing how to love on children mm-hmm. and have patience. So he has it. But with that being said, a lot of men don't know what role they can play. Mm-hmm. And it's up to us if we want to get that support mm-hmm. to tell them, yeah. you mm-hmm. know, or get them around dad so they can casually talk about it. Because I have a lot of male friends who the wife will come to me and say, oh, he not doing he not doing this. He not doing that. But when I talk to the daddy, they want to. Mm-hmm. And the mama is the one saying, well, oh, you're not doing it the way that I want you to do. It. Yes. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know? That's a message because <laughs> I had to redo some stuff myself because yeah. I realized I was blocking Jared for being the best dad he can be right. because he wasn't doing it my Your way. way. He mm-hmm. wasn't cleaning the house my way. Yeah. I had to be content. Yeah. And just be like, oh, okay, that's still it, area. It's, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's, it's growing because the bathroom is always a battle. Oh, like, I had to get, just get let the, it go. Get the get around the toilet right. room, please, sir. Like that's part of the toilet. Oh god. But you know, um, especially with boys pissing all over the damn mm, place, Jesus. and I'm like, you don't smell that. You don't see that. No, no, right. You don't. But <laughs> just really being content, like doing yeah. things his way. Right. His way works for him. My yep. way works for me, and my way may confuse him. And yeah. I need to be okay with that. Slowly letting go. Letting go. It's growing pains with that. It's not perfect, but really stop getting in the way of his parenting because I realized right. he was getting frustrated too. Yeah. The kids also pick up on that. Like yeah. they know, like okay, well if my dad say no, I can just go ask my mom right. and she'll make sure it happens. Like we have and to then be it's like also allowing them to establish a uh, independent relationship right. with the the actual father yeah right because yeah. like yeah they know daddy loves them but if they're not having those intimate moments where daddy was the one to put the band-aid on right. or daddy watched a movie with me they're not able to create those same mm-hmm. memories like mm-hmm. every memory is just mommy and daddy yeah or just mommy yeah. right mm-hmm. and so for me i love being able to watch my kids with their dad mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. it's just like the most yeah. beautiful thing yes, especially my my daughter you know like the relationship that she has when it's just her and daddy mm-hmm. like when he tells me what they do i'm like that is amazing mm-hmm. but if i was the one kind of orchestrating how he does fatherhood yeah it would look very different, yeah. you yeah. know? And so I think that as mothers, we have to release control. Mm. Like I've had friends that are like, I don't, I just can't go out of town. I'm like, you can go out of town. Mm-hmm. Okay. It ain't, when you come back, the house may look a mess. <laughs> right. You know, the baby may have candy or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like grandparents are good for yeah. that. They're going to feed the kids what they want to feed them. Right. They're not going to feed them on your schedule. Right. But guess what? You wanted the help. Right. But more than that, you want them, the kids to have a relationship mm-hmm. with other people yeah. beyond you. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. so important. Yeah. It really is. Mm-hmm. And then when they get old enough, they can tell you what they're supposed mm-hmm. to be doing, what they're not. Because you will be like, uh-uh, we can't do that. We yeah. go to bed at this time. Okay, exactly. great. <laughs> yep. They great. know they routine. Yeah, they know they routine. Do. Yeah, okay. they do. They really they do. do. That was good. That was good. Um, so when you talking about pausing and, um, I saw something on Instagram that you posted about some things you learned in 2023 mm. and what you're taking in 2024 and those type of things. And we are in, freshly in the new year. Yeah. And so I just had a personal question for you. Like, what are you leaving in 2023 and what are you taking with you or what did you bring in 2024? Yeah. 
So on the, the post that you're referencing, I talked about the skills that I built in mm -hmm. 2023. Um, and the reason why I even did that post was because I, I heard someone talk, they were talking about, well, you know, what defines success, mm -hmm. right? Because when we think about New Year's resolutions and, you know, going into a new year, we're always just, um, okay, what am I going to do better? Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, how am I going to be more successful? And his advice going into the new year was to even reframe how we think about success. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, instead of trying to be the most successful or the fastest or this and that, ask yourself, how can I add more value? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I also was listening to something and y'all know I'm always listening. Yeah. <laughs> my, my clients are always like, so you read how many books this week? <laughs> I was also listening to something that talked about how going into this new year, it's important for us to go into a space of more individual mastery mm -hmm. um, because so many people have become generalists mm -hmm. um, and the mm -hmm. idea of having a craft like we used to has mm -hmm. kind of gone away. Mm -hmm. And so combining those styles, I started to reflect on number one, how am I adding value in rooms mm -hmm. and how can I get better at how I add value? Mm -hmm. Right. And so I always like to end the year with like a big reflection of like what I've not necessarily what I did wrong, but like, what did I do? Right. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, I haven't really thought about what I'm leaving in 2023. I think what I want to leave is, you know, being, you know, sick. Yeah. I just want to be healthy. Yeah. Right. I want to yeah. make good choices. Um, but I think that in 2023, I got very, very clear on what I do and do not like to do when it comes to my career. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. sitting down and pausing again, I got to reflect on how did this project make me feel? Right. How did working with this type of team make me feel? And, you know, what am I really good at mm -hmm. and how can I become better at it? And so I looked through every single project that I did, the team, the locations, you know, did I have to travel? I realized that I don't like to travel that much for work. Okay. You know, I don't like going away from my kids during the week, not because mom guilt no <laughs> bye <laughs> but because it messes up my schedule yeah. like you know yeah. like they got practices every day out the week like it just messes up the flow yeah. of everybody they act up in school when I'm gone because mm -hmm. their routine is not the same it's just not worth it to me unless it's a really big thing that mm -hmm. I need to be at mm -hmm. so I realized like I don't really like to travel for work mm -hmm. um, I also realized that when it comes to the type of teams that I work with I like to be in environments where I can be myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I wear my nails long. Mm -hmm. I don't want to feel like I have to wear my nails short, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, sometimes we're on Zoom, my team member, you know, she's fully dressed, you know, in a suit, but that's just how she moves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. For me, I can be in sweatshirts, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like getting really clear on what I like and then doing more of that, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And so as I go into the new year, now it's about mastering that. How mm -hmm. do I find more spaces where I can show up as myself? Right. How do I co connect with people that their vibe is my vibe, right? right? And then it's the actual skill set, right? Like my skill set as a coach, my skill set as a facilitator. How can I dig deeper into that so that the things that I do resonates um, so that people are sharing it and then it gets better and better. And so I think that, you know, taking a, going back and reflecting and seeing like what you did to mm -hmm. add value and then how you can master that yeah. in 2024, you know, they say it takes what, 10,000 hours to master something. Mm -hmm. How can you get your hours up this year? Oh, Ooh, get I your like hours that. Get up. your hours up. Okay. That's the, hours. That's the motto. <laughs> get your hours up. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's next for you? How you can get your hours up, Alina? What's next for you? Um, You know, I think that this is going to be a breakout year mm -hmm. um, for me. It already has been. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. y'all know I'm like, I've been missing from social right. for a while. I'm back, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> uh, so restarting the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, you know, really getting clear on like where I want to be. Like, right. I love hosting. And so I want to get. Uh, more hosting opportunities mm -hmm. beyond the show um, mm -hmm. just to kind of talk about some of the things that I give to individuals in my coaching I want to give to the masses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that this will be the year that I start actually working on my book okay um, and so my process that I use in my coaching mm -hmm. is called life crafting and so I want to turn that into a book and and really start um, putting the concepts from that in different environments. So yeah. I want to do it not only at the work level mm -hmm. or the personal mm -hmm. level, but I want to do it in academia mm -hmm. because I think mm -hmm. that, you know, we taught, we're taught so many skills for success, but we're not taught life skills. Mm. And so I want to get mm -hmm. that to the audiences that I serve 
earlier, right? I don't want to meet you when you're 40 and you're mm-hmm. trying to fix it. Like, I wish I could know the 20 year old version of you or the 16 year old version of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so just really deepening my craft, um, definitely getting rid of imposter syndrome, something that I've dealt with. Um, I was diagnosed with social anxiety last year. Mm-hmm which is different than regular anxiety mm-hmm. and I did not know that. Mm-hmm. But once I got clarity around that and was able to understand what I've been dealing with my whole life, it's kind of like when people say they get a dyslexia or ADHD diagnosis mm-hmm. and everything opens up for yeah. them, that's how it was for me. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. once I got it and I understood it and I was able to support it through, you know, uh, therapy and the, right. and the team that I'm working with, I feel like a new me, yeah. you know? And so mm-hmm. I think that this year is like I have a – program um that i'm launching but it's really a year-long campaign of like the year of you Mm -hmm. and it's really my programs always are a reflection of me Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and this is the year of me Mm -hmm. you know it's not that i'm leaving my babies behind but i'm like showing up in a way that like i want them to remember me right Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. yes because they're watching everything that you're doing and it actually kind of shapes them a little bit too and when they become partners to someone i don't want them i don't want my kids to Remember me as well. My mama did it. She was broke mm-hmm. down. She ain't take care of herself. Mm-hmm. She ain't. Mm-hmm. no. Yes. I want my boys to be like no. Partner, go get your nails done. Go have your spa day. Go. It's in the budget. Yes. Like this mm-hmm. is a necessity. Like you yes. have to do this first before you came and be with me. You have to take care of yourself and put mm-hmm. yourself first. And yeah. my boys are seeing that now yeah. because I'm finally saying no. I'm putting me first. Like I love y'all kids. I love you, husband. But I can't keep operating like this yeah. yeah and so and they get excited even when we have recording weekends they're like oh you're doing the mama pod yeah. you like, know i went and told my girl my daughter because she did her first podcast not too long ago oh. <laughs> like, what are you doing today i'm like i'm going to be interviewed on a podcast mm-hmm. oh my gosh like take pictures but you know uh-huh. even like something as simple as reading i read yeah. all the time but i realized i never read books anymore so my kids don't mm-hmm. see me reading but one of the things that the teachers talked about was like if you want to grow readers, let your te- let your children see you read yeah, more. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I was like, I got to be more cognizant of everything that I'm doing that's positive, right. that I'm doing it around them. Because yep. a lot of times my self-help is separate of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so now that they're getting older, I am being a little bit more strategic around taking the great parts of me and yeah. like mm-hmm. exposing them yes. to that, bringing mm-hmm. them to my work, bringing them to my conversations, yeah. my meetings. I want y'all to see these successful yeah. black people. I want y'all to hear people mm-hmm. running meetings. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. we have to be responsible for like, like bringing them into our world because sometimes it's like we separate like me time and them time yeah. but eventually you can kind yeah. of bring it together that's yeah. so true I-, I always say that i want eli to be proud of me not just being his mom but being me mm. like i know that that's my mom but i also know that mama also put herself first with mm-hmm. whatever she wants or whatever yeah. she feels she needs so that's the message, yeah. baby. That is the message. That is the message. Yes. Um, this was great. This is great. So it was. I think it's time for our next segment. And what is, is that, it? friend? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, so y'all know we always keep a cocktail. Always, every episode, we keep a cocktail. And today's cocktail obviously is inspired by Alina. Mm-hmm. Um, we always have a mama juice that is inspired by our guest. And we always ask, like, what's your favorite beverage? And then we take a lot of the content that we talk about. And Alina's drink is called Don't Take It Personal. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Because she had to take some time to herself to get herself together. And she didn't need nobody taking that personally. Mm, she had mm. to work on her. Yeah, Don't take it personally. Yes. I'm out, but don't take it personally. <laughs> I love that. So we have just a traditional tequila sunrise. Mm. Um, this is tequila, orange juice, and grenadine. And it's layered because she had to take some time to mm. really cut through the layers and yes. get herself together during that sabbatical. And she said, don't take it personal. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we're going to cheers to Alina. Cheers. And Come if you on. are a mama to be and you want a mocktail Cheers. just get you some orange juice and i think grenadine let me don't yes, don't, don't. Okay, okay let me i just want to make sure it's healthy for y'all to drink oh but okay. um I l- I, let me do a little research on that i'll get back to y'all <laughs> or just get the orange juice but yes don't take it personal love that love that yes so if this is your first time listening we also have a segment called mama's corner and this is our opportunity to connect with our guests and our listeners so a lot of times our listeners are right in and ask us for advice and we 
advise them based on our personal experiences, mm -hmm. not as experts. Alina's expert, we're not. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but if something works out for you, definitely give us credit. If it doesn't, we ain't say nothing. <laughs> uh, we ain't say nothing. So, right. What do I know? Me. Right, you didn't hear from us. Um, so, Alina, you're a coach, right? And you are helping women, moms, every day mm -hmm. get in their life together. Mm -hmm. So I think for Mama's Corner, it can be like interactive and it'll be a little fun. And mm -hmm. so I want you to get your coaching hat on. <laughs> and I want you to kind of walk us through a mom who has lost herself, no Ooh. self identity, don't mm -hmm. know who she is outside of mamahood. When she said, Devin, I'm Devin, I'm just a mom. Mm. What do you say to that mama? How do you get her together? Wrap her up, help her, oh put a bow God. on it. That's so real. You know what? I actually, um, I said that the other day and I was like so embarrassed because I'm like, girl, you don't even talk like this, you know, <laughs> because that's not really what I feel. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, you know, in the spirit of the reminder remedy, mm -hmm. when we think about coaching, a lot of times it is just to remind someone of who they are. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And so. You know, if you if you're working with a coach, one of the things and, and the benefits is that a coach is very different than a consultant in the mm -hmm. sense of a consultant is going to come in and tell you this is what you need to do to get your identity back. Mm -hmm. This is the five steps. Right. But with the coach, it's very much about co-creation. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. it's, it's about, you know, me asking the right questions to help you identify what you already know. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, my tagline from my podcast is like everything you need is everything you got. Mm -hmm. Because I truly believe that we possess these skills. Mm -hmm. So, if you know, if someone who is looking to reclaim their identity Number one is we're going to explore, you know, what is the story that you're telling yourself? Right. Right. And so that exercise looks like just writing it down, because sometimes we don't even realize the subconscious thoughts that we think about ourselves. So right. I'll have them, you know, write down the story that they that they believe right now. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what is the identity that they're taking on right now? And then our journey is to recraft that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the ways that we go about rewriting a story is. Number one, you know, leaning on the fact that it didn't just start with us. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have very powerful ancestors, all of us in our lineage that can mm -hmm. support us getting past this phase. Mm -hmm. You know, um, one of the things that we have to remember as mothers, but also as women who are healing is that, you know, our grandmother carry our eggs, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. you know, y'all know mm -hmm. this from a biological standpoint. When mm -hmm. your grandmother was pregnant with your mother, your mother already had mm -hmm. you in her womb. Mm -hmm. So from a DNA standpoint, sometimes we come into this life with some level of trauma, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And But with that also being said, we come into this life with DNA and genetics that also make us powerful, mm -hmm. right? And so is getting to the root of like, who are you really? Right. Mm -hmm. So as an example, you know, I kept feeling this pulling towards like education or teaching. And I'm like, I don't want to be in the classroom. I've right. never desired to be in the classroom. But I can remember from a child, from being a, a little girl, I would line up my stuffed animals. I would tell my mama to print off stuff at her <laughs> job. And I would like do math worksheets. Mm -hmm. Like I love coaching mm -hmm. people. But I have this affinity for black people, mm -hmm. right? Where do we find our place in the world? Mm -hmm. And so I'm doing all of this work trying to figure out, like, should I do it? Does this mean I got to go and get another degree? Why do I feel like I already possess what I need? Right. Mm -hmm. And I just felt called to, like, Google, like, my grandparents. Mm -hmm. Girl, do you know that in this exercise... I ended up discovering some work that my grandfather had done. I already knew that they were in academia. Like mm -hmm. my, my grandmother, she was the superintendent for Atlanta Public Schools. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was a dean at Spelman. But when I Google his name, the document that came up was literally like 42 pages of work that he put together for the city of Atlanta wow. to essentially show them how to specifically teach black children so they could be more successful in school. Wow. Oh, wow. And this was literally at the moment that I'm thinking, I don't have enough to be what right. I want to be. Right. And to me, that was like a moment where universe is aligned, where I realized like, I don't need y'all to tell me who I am. Mm -hmm. I was, I already came here with the destiny and an identity. That's mm -hmm. right. Now I have to be reminded of it. So mm -hmm. I think that doing that work with my clients is powerful because I have them call up their grandparents. I have them talk to friends to tell them what are the best parts of them. Mm -hmm. And then typically I would say in 30 to 60 days, 
they real they almost like had this reminder or this light bulb moment of like, damn girl, you out of shit. Right. Yeah. You know? Yes. And like it happens and then like that it takes off, right? Yeah. And so first of all, it's just kinda helping them rewrite whatever has been tarnished, right. Right. which right. could be tarnished by hormones mm-hmm. or, you know, body changes yeah. or a job change or being in a relationship where you're not you can't be your full self. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The other part of it is being okay with like shedding old identities Mm -hmm. right so we know that that's a big part of like becoming a mom is like sometimes we hold on to like who we used to be right Mm -hmm. and it's like oh i can't i gotta be able to move through this right yeah and so who even once i become a mom i'm a different mom than when i had one kid versus three kids Mm -hmm. i'm Mm -hmm. a different mom than when my kid got diagnosed with this versus when he did Mm -hmm. when he was Mm -hmm. like all these Mm -hmm. seasons help you become this new person Mm -hmm. and it's like how do I become okay with like the ebbs and flows? Right. So it's that new skill set of like, I'm going to always change. How do I do the work regularly to check in with myself? Right. Yeah. So that's where coaching to me comes in because it gives you these tools. Like I have a client who now she was with me for three years, but now she just checks in because she has the tools. So right. she'll come back and she'll say, girl, I dealt with this, but I use this, you know, activity mm-hmm. to bring me back to myself right. or I need to do a quarterly check in. And so, you know, it's a process, but I think that when it comes to us feeling like we've lost ourselves, we have to do the work to figure out who we are now Mm -hmm. and not hold on to the to the past that, you know, the past version of us. But then also using the things that are inherent to Mm -hmm. us and our legacy to then build us back up. Right. Mm -hmm. That was good. I feel like I need to (laughs) tap. Listen, the ancestors will come. (laughs) <laughs> right seriously <laughs> the ancestors will come back and speak to you mm-hmm. they will they will yeah they will Alina, this was great of course you blessed the pod again for the second time we mm-hmm. can't wait to do it for a third Listen. but how can the people find you if they want to reach out to you if they want to know more or they want some coaching yeah. they got some questions they want to take a quiz yeah like what you got so um most of my information can all be found on my website the remindermedy.com um, I'm on Instagram. I have most of my stuff that comes to my personal page. So that's at Alina Conley. But then the podcast page is at The Reminder Remedy. Mm-hmm. Um, and from there, it'll take you down the pathway of discovering yourself. Okay? <laughs> so I look forward to connecting with y'all. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, that. Alina. I love that. Always keeping us together. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Well, Always. this is great. Well, that concludes our show. It so does. until next time, mamas. Bye. bye.